Hi everybody, welcome to TIA Now. I'm Clarence Reynolds. There is a long list of specifications vying to be the standard in virtualization, but will there be a single winner or a range of interfaces? Hima Kadia is VP and Head of Strategy and Practice at Prodapt, and she joins us to discuss the API war in virtualization. Hima, thank you for being with us today. Thank you for, giving, for inviting me. Absolutely. Hima, how do you resolve the laundry list of specs vying to be virtualization's industry standard? So broadly, before I address that question, broadly we can classify the APIs in the virtualization industry into three categories. One is where we lack specifications. Second category is where we have some well-defined standards for specific services. And third category is where, as you rightly mentioned, we have competing interfaces. So let me give you an example of each of the categories and then come to the solution. So lack of um, specifications. Some of the examples would be an API for, say, service such as bandwidth calendaring, or um, business application APIs for uh, layer two VPN service or event-based configuration for uh, MPLS network and contained media delivery services. The second category, where we say that we have some specifications, an example would be carrier ethernet. Recently, TM Forum and MEF, along with operator, uh, uh, have teamed up to define lifecycle service orchestration APIs, specifically focusing on the carrier ethernet services. And the third category, where we see competing interfaces, an example would be IP address management, or billing, or VNF lifecycle management, or network virtualization, or orchestration. Additionally, when physical network functions and virtual network functions need to interoperate, what happens is we need to do a lot of customization on these competing APIs. So coming back to your question, how do we resolve this issue of competing APIs? One of the solution could be open APIs with microservices architecture. Although we see that open APIs adoption is still far-sighted in the industry. And, and that's really the, the question. Can the industry actually merge these competing interfaces down to a single winner? Or is there, will there need to be just a range of interfaces that we, we deal with moving forward? So collaboration between industry bodies is definitely needed. And it's already happening to some extent. Recently, we saw ONAP with Linux Foundation is merging, is collaborating with MEF to define lifecycle service orchestration APIs. They're focusing specifically on the northbound interface between the orchestrator and the OSS BSS stack. Uh, additionally, as I mentioned in the previous, uh, previous response, uh, MEF, TM Forum, and operators are defining lifecycle service orchestration APIs specifically for carrier Ethernet services. So as the solutions mature, we will see more open APIs readily available. The operators will also start adopting those APIs instead of investing their development budget into those APIs. And as operators will start adopting, we will see larger merger of these competing interfaces. So are there risks or rewards to winning that battle? And, and so how did, would you proceed with your product in the meantime? So there are multiple ecosystem players in the SD and NFV API development space. One of the key players is the service providers, the second being the infrastructure vendors or the hypervisors, the third being the network, um, uh, network equipment vendors, fourth, the system integrators, and fifth, the standard bodies. Now, depending upon which ecosystem player we are referring to, the risks and rewards are going to vary. So let's focus on the rewards for the service providers. The key rewards is going to be agility, it's going to be operational efficiency, as well as it is going to be time to market. Ideally, what we see in the market is with our customer base, it takes around one to three months to deliver uh, a service, primarily because it is the amount of time it takes to integrate the multi-vendor, multi-domain, and multi-cloud ecosystem. The additional reward would be uh, cost savings because now operators will be directly able to use this readily available APIs. The risk uh, because of lack of availability of these APIs is the IT overhead and the vendor lock-in. So will open API get its entrance to carrier grade network solutions or will it be vendor developed API? Yeah, so open APIs in the network virtualization industry has gained adoption primarily because of the white box appliances but we still see issues related to security and them being carrier grade. 
So with microservices architecture, we think both can be used. Vendor-specific APIs can focus on inter-component communication, whereas open API initiatives can focus more on the user-driven service and capabilities. So, and what are the key drivers for open API initiatives? So we see three primary key drivers. One is the digital transformation. Within digital transformation, it is customer experience, it is internal operations, and of course, the partner channel management. The second key driver is a 5G related network transformation. And third is the IoT services. So together, these three drivers are pushing for adoption of open API initiatives. Well, we'll have to have you back and talk more about the war as it progresses yes. through. Thank you, Himakadia, for being with us. Thank you very much, Clarence. Really appreciate it. And thank you for watching. We'd like to hear from you. So reach out to us on Facebook or Twitter, and you can also see more videos at TIANow.org and on our YouTube channel. TIA Now will be at the Open Networking Summit 2018 in Los Angeles in two weeks. And if you'd like to participate in our programming, visit TIANow.org slash ONS 2018. Thanks for watching.